It's new trailer day. I am in the truck heading out to Jersey. I ordered a new trailer in January. It's April 1st. Uh, trailer delivered this week, this past week. Um, just the aftermath of COVID. I guess they've been behind on production and delivery. So, um, yeah, I had a Adirondack Professional Series uh, 7,000 pound capacity, um, two 3,500 pound axles, and uh, with the upgrades made to my Rubicon LJ, it was just not heavy duty enough. Um, I was seeing um, some flex in the axles that I didn't like. I just, I felt like it wasn't safe anymore. So I wasn't willing to risk it. Um, so I sold that trailer in January to somebody who's gonna be transporting a um, quarter mile or eighth mile uh, Chevelle. So that car is nowhere near the weight limit of that trailer, it'll be fine for him. Um, so what did I get? Um, I went to something with 5,200 pound axles. So in theory, total capacity of the trailer is somewhere around 10,400 pounds, but I think they write it down as 9,900, something like that. Um, trailer weighs two or 3,000 pounds, so you gotta take that out of the capacity, but then you also get to add back the tongue weight that you're gonna lose. Um, so a uh, bunch of math to it to figure out exactly how much, but bottom line is it's rated for plenty of weight to carry my Jeep. Um, it's a PJ Trailers uh, B5 buggy hauler, went with the wood deck, a um, few options on it, like uh, I did get the winch mount that I didn't have on the other one, um, and I also went ahead and got a built-in trailer box, interested to see how big that actually turns out to be. Um, Side note, if you do go with the uh, Adirondack, and I, you know, it was a good trailer. I, the only thing I didn't like about the, the Adirondack other than the weight limit was the uh, the way they did the doors for the, for the ramps. Um, they kind of always got in the way when you were loading and unloading, but not, you know, that's something that you could modify. I could have just cut them off and put chains in the way, something like that. Um, overall good trailer uh, if you get one of those and you need a trailer box tra uh, tractor supply has a trailer box that will fit on the uh, on the front of the trailer really well you can just weld or bolt it right on plenty of space for straps extra parts uh, a jack tools you know that way if you have a flat tire, you're ready to go. Um, but I just, I wanted to get this one where I didn't have to mess with it. Obviously, I'm still working on my LJ. I now have the Project LJ for my wife. We still have the old Commando sitting there that at some point I should get back to so I can either get it used or get it moving on to its next owner. Um, so I have enough projects. I don't need the trailer to be a project. And my mentality has always kind of been the stuff that I'm going to put on public roads and, and have it primarily be that purpose. I want to be 100% above board, totally legal, perfectly ready to go, properly maintained at all times. If it's an off-road toy, you know, I can just not drive it on the road for a few months if I know it's not ready to go. But if it's meant for the road, I want it ready for the road. Um, so I didn't want to mess around with swapping axles on the other trailer and trying to change load limits on it or anything like that. Just easy change. Get that one gone and move on to the next one. Um, and if not for COVID and if not for inflation and everything else, it would have been a much easier thing. But here we are. So anyway, 
I got about an hour and 20 minute drive to go. I'm gonna head on over there and see what they got for me. So, see you soon. Okay, so one thing I gotta say right off the bat, uh, I've been pulling this trailer, the new trailer, for several miles now, getting on my way home, and it is so much quieter than the Adirondack. Um, and that's not a brand thing, that's a setup thing. Uh, the Adirondack was a full steel deck, and they don't weld the steel deck completely. They stitch weld it. They're not running continuous beads across every support. So the uh, diamond plate steel still has a good amount of flex in it, and even the stitch welds they put in it still causes a little bit of um, warping. So there's just some built-in tension in that deck plate that just flexes and bounces as you drive. And with the wood deck, you can't hear it back there. I was driving for a little while with the back window open at 65 miles an hour on the highway and hitting expansion joints that would normally cause the old trailer to bang, 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 bang down the road and it's whisper quiet. So, very impressed with that part of it. Um, and not surprised, one of the guys from the club when I first got the Adirondack commented that that's what he didn't like about steel decks was the noise. Um, so, it's just definitely a different experience pulling this trailer from the other one. Um, pull straight. I know it's back there. It's definitely enough weight that I know it's back there. But, uh, pull straight and easy. So, so far so good. No surprises. So, new trailer day also happens to be rainy weather day. But, here we are. PJ5, uh, PJ Trailers B5. Buggy hauler trailer. It's got different hitch than I'm used to dealing with. That comes out of there, and that just lifts right up, super easy. Nice. See if the chains have a little hook to hang from, so you're not just bowling them up on themselves. Plenty of slack on this wiring trailer box doesn't have any hydraulic uh, or pneumatic lifts on it it's got a kickstand that has apparently trapped itself ah, there we go I guess that's supposed to sit there and there we go kind of sits like that I made a look to do some sort of pneumatic deck lifts on that uh, got drain holes in the bag so it's not watertight it's got a good lip on it though so and just get water just intruding in there. Um, spare tire mount. It's good and solid. I did buy a second spare with the trailer. Um, doesn't have a mount. I'll have to figure something out for that. Or it can just live there. Um, what else? So, electric brakes, both axles. So all four tires have brakes. Uh, it does have electric breakaway. With battery box. So, 
you do want to check these occasionally and you can see if I press the button fully charged ready to go um, that's so that if something happens and it pops off the hitch and uh, breaks away from the truck this cable will actually just pull and it'll just end up popping right out of there and when that happens it ends up activating the brakes and that deactivates them so if it ends up breaking away the idea is that the trailer will not just keep on rolling down the road it'll try to stop itself and drag itself to a stop so we got the shin guard rail all the way down with stake pockets and tie downs there's six tie downs one right at the top of the dovetail or two I should say because they match on either side two at the center of the wheel wells and then two up front but the stake pockets are strong enough and then there's also standoffs here I'm sure I could loop a chain under there and be safe um, drive over fenders yeah that's solid Oof, that's some heavy duty material I think it's a double layer of that uh, diamond plate. That's what it feels like. They, they may have just doubled it up on the, on the edges there. And then the rug rail continues. This is a really nice feature. So it's got jacks on both sides at the tail. And the idea here is when you're loading, it puts a lot of weight on the tail end of the trailer. The tail end likes to dip, which brings the front end up, which drags the truck's rear end up. Your parking brake is on your rear axle. So now all of a sudden, you're pushing your truck forward while you're loading it. So even the Adirondack, I said, make sure you support the tail end of the trailer when loading. But it didn't really give a good way to do it. So I used to just put wood blocks under it. Sometimes they would work. Sometimes they would fall over. Um, so with these, you literally just pop this handle out at the pin. And then it just rotates down. And pop it back on. And... Oh, that was tight. Boom. There we go. We can jack that down. I'm kind of curious to see if this has enough lift to where I could change a tire if I had to with them. I'm not going to bet on it. And it's something I'll test and confirm. But it would be nice if, uh, if between these and the main jack on the tongue if we could get enough lift put that down for a second The answer is yes. So, added bonus makes it a lot easier to change a tire if you have to. I don't even have the front jacked up. It's resting on the truck right now. That tongue could go a lot higher. So, that's great. And these come off. So, 
I might not leave them on there on a trip. I might throw them in the back of the truck or in the trailer box. But it's nice to have them. And then, oh, back here is obviously, well, obviously for anybody that's used one of these trailers, oof, that's going to take a little bit of getting used to. <laughs> we got the ramps in there. Gonna have to put this down for a second. So we got the ramps there. They just kind of slide out and they'll just have a like a U, uh, U section walled on the end of it that'll just hook over this rail so that you can literally set them at any width. All the way out at the end, right next to the middle, right next to each other, whatever you need. Um, so loading the lawnmower or a Jeep, either way you should be fine. Um, I have seen people comment that they store them upside down. And you can see why right there. Let's see. Trailer paint is never the best. You won't ever find anybody reviewing a trailer going, oh, this is the best paint in the world, it's perfect. Uh, it always ends up with some misses and some chips. And like in the ramps right here, you can see just from these being recently manufactured, sitting outside for a few weeks, they already have a little bit of surface rust on them. So if you store these upside down, they won't pull water like that. Um, and that's a good little quarter inch of water in that corner there with the slope of my driveway. So not a big deal. It's a little bit too too close to the shredded up car tent here for me to pull it all the way out right now, I think. Um, but when I put them back in, I'll put them in upside down. It just means when you take them in and out, you have to flip them. Really not a big deal. So the other nice thing about this trailer coming into the driveway, it did not drag at all. I have a good little bit of a, a grade at the apron there. Um, because it's 5,200 pound axles with the heavier springs, it does sit a decent amount higher than the 7,000 pound rated trailers. Um, bigger tires, bigger axles, bigger springs. So the tail end of this trailer some good ground clearance even with that door open I, I have no expectation that I'll have any problem with that hitting the ground um, license plate just right underneath the trailer never could have done that on the other one it would have been dragging um, kind of surprised that's even allowed there because it is pretty far underneath but that's where the manufacturer put it. So, anyway, uh, easy grease hubs. So, for maintenance purposes, you just pop this shirt out. Oh, well, my cap's actually loose. I'm gonna have to check those. That's interesting. It's not coming out, but you just pop this off, and inside there is a zerk fitting, so that's where you would grease it. 
goes in easier than it comes out. Alright, I'll double check those, but it's not coming off. You can see the wiring for the brakes there. Looks like they got uh, some heat shrink wrap around the joint there. So, I don't know if I'd say waterproof, but water resistant connections. Good enough. I'm not going to be dunking this trailer in rivers. So honestly, trailer box is fine. It's got good size. It fits the frame rails well enough. I'm not impressed with the opening. That's a fairly large opening on both sides. I'm curious why that's there. I don't know. It's probably meant as a wire pass through. Um, and probably meant so that you can put the battery in there because this does have a winch plate and you can see they've got it set up with a pass through hole there. Right there, sorry. To allow the power cables to go through for the, the winch. It's got the four plate holes for the standard winch base. I will probably not put a battery inside that box. What I'll probably end up doing is welding in some sort of a cross brace down there. Maybe put some expanded metal down there for just general storage. And then right up against the back of the, or the, the front of the trailer rail here. Maybe build out a, a battery box <coughs> should be high enough that it won't hit anything I mean, realistically you got to get past this frame rail anyway so uh, yeah I like it Dexter axles US made Um, so, things I want to add, potentially somewhere to store the extra spare tire, winch and battery, maybe some kind of work lights, and potentially, potentially some sort of reverse lights. I think it would be really nice to have some lights in this thing for backing up. Um, not sure where they would go, but there is a pin in the harness, the wire harness, that's not usually used that ties into the reverse circuit so that you can wire in backup lights. And I just know getting into my driveway at night after a long day of driving, you know, sometimes I'm coming from four or five hours away. Sometimes I'm already, you know, in the Jeep driving during the morning and then after four or five hours of wheeling, hopping in the truck and driving home four or five hours. So you get tired and it gets dark. So having a good light source to back up on is definitely on my list of desirables. Uh, the other idea is to actually put some sort of a little light pillar in the bottom corner of my driveway, but my driveway actually Siamese is with the next door neighbor, so I wouldn't be able to do that on both sides. Let me see. I got the cobblestone or the Belgian block, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> so, excuse me. Anyway, I am very happy. I, I definitely like it. There's some things that I'll want to adjust over time, I'm sure. Um, but the biggest thing is 
these big six lug 5200 pound axles are going to be a much better fit for the weight of my jeep you know this one is fine on a 7,000 pound trailer that would run on that all day long no problem thousands of miles that one on 40 inch tires Dana 60 up front 14 bolt in the rear is just a lot heavier especially when the spare tires on it it just makes it unreasonably heavy for a 7,000 pound trailer you're at the limit of that trailer's capacity um, and that's something else to consider is so this trailer is definitely heavier than my old Adirondack trailer it's wider it's got heavier steel in use even though that other trailer was box steel and this is uh, C channel C frame um, I believe there's a good deal more steel in the frame itself it did use a wood deck <coughs> so that takes some weight out of it but it's got heavier axles it just it's overall a heavier design uh, trailer um, so that's going to impact the tow vehicle right um, going down the road I definitely felt this one a little bit more than the old one empty I tow with a 1500 Ram so half ton pickup truck it pulls it no problem um, it can stop it no problem with the trailer brakes so we're good on both those fronts it is within the weight limit but if I stepped up to <clears throat> the next size up I think is a 15,000 pound trailer the weight of that trailer combined with my Jeep gets away from what that truck can handle so all things to consider when you're picking up a trailer um, no regrets on buying the Adirondack it was a great trailer for the years I owned it and the price point was very different than this one uh, I was able to walk in and buy that one cash this one I took a small loan on um, you know it's also post COVID everything's more expensive and at the time realistically it did fine with the Jeep I had which was more similar to what this one is now um, knowing now that I built mine up if I had planned on that from the start it might have been better to go this way in the first place um, it, you know you can play that game all day long though uh, what if, what if, what if? Hindsight's 2020. So, I think for the use I got out of it, the Adirondack did great. I used it about 10,000 miles. 10,068 miles is what I had on the uh, trailer odometer on this truck. And this is the only truck I've ever uh, towed that one with. And I can't complain. It did well. But, uh, I, I will say that this is definitely a much heavier duty trailer uh, one other thing to consider when you're buying a trailer look where the jack is like if you can get your truck up against it with it mounted on the hitch like i can open my trailer or my tailgate with no problem with this hitched up a lot of the trailers have that mounted right there and uh, that puts it too close. That ends up making it where the tailgate will dent itself. I think it's right borderline hitting that. I don't know if you can see where that's lining up. So when you go in and get a trailer, figure out if you're going to be able to use it and function with the truck. Because every time I drop the Jeep off the trailer, I end up in and out of the tailgate. Um, it's usually easier to throw the straps in the back of the truck instead of trying to get them wadded up and neatly stored in the box. Um, I'll often just throw the jack board for the the bottom of that uh, that jack in the back of the truck rather than sticking it in the trailer box. Usually, I keep the trailer box just for long-term storage of the straps between use, wheel chocks. 
um, some extra fluids for the vehicles that I'm bringing um, uh, lug wrench for the trailer uh, trailer lug nuts um, jack if I need it which now I shouldn't and sometimes I'll store some spare parts for the Jeep that I don't want to carry in the Jeep so when it's hey let's hurry up and offload or onload it's usually more convenient to use, use the back of the truck bed you know, usually for trips the, the clothes, the food, whatever gets stored the first two thirds of the box and the last third is usually just junk for getting the Jeep, the, the Jeep on the ground ready to go anyway getting pretty far afield on the topic here uh, bottom line new trailer day I'm happy and I can't wait to play with this thing get the Jeep out and have some fun